Telemetrics. So you have covered all of analytical geometry, and, as we thought, having visited so many areas of maths, you will have deepened your mathematical thinking considerably. Now it's important to consolidate what we have learned into a very useful toolkit. This summary, which you will find in the answer series Grade 12 Maths 2 in 1 Study Guide, contains all the tools you need to succeed in answering exam questions on this topic. Although these two pages look fairly dense, this is the first page, and that is the second. It is great that we can summarize all that we have learnt in a two-page toolkit. There are four drawers of tools. Formulae, graph concepts, straight line graphs, and circles. These drawers contain all the tools that you will need. To the first drawer. Formulae. Formulae must be understood and not just applied blindly. Be guided by the sketch always. The distance formula. Consider two points A and B. A, x1, y1 and B, x2, y2. Important here is the horizontal length, x2 minus x1, and the vertical length, y2 minus y1, and the fact that we apply the theorem of Pythagoras to establish the length of AB. The midpoint formula. Most important here is to realize that the coordinates of the midpoint M are the averages of the coordinates of the endpoints A and B. This explains why these are plus signs and not minus signs. The coordinates of the midpoint are also halfway between the coordinates of the endpoints and can often just be written down by inspection. The gradient formula. The gradient m is the change in y over the change in x, which is y2 minus y1, the vertical, over x2 minus x1, the horizontal. Also note that for theta, which is the angle of inclination, the tan is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, which equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 again, the gradient of the line. Very significant is the gradient of a line. Its values, positive, negative, zero, and undefined. Pause to note the gradients of these two lines. This one must be positive, and it is 3 over 2. This one must be negative, and it is negative 1 over 4. The fact that parallel lines have equal gradients is an important point to remember. And note that parallel lines imply equal gradients, but that the reverse is also true. The gradients of perpendicular lines 1 and 2. 2 over 3 and minus 3 over 2. And the product of these gradients is equal to minus 1 i.e. the product of the gradients of perpendicular lines is minus 1. Collinear points. Points which lie on the same line. And we note this symbol here for reverse statements. The gradients of line AB and line AC being equal would imply that AB and C are collinear points but the converse would also be true. And then, related to the gradient, the angle of inclination. The inclination of a line is the angle which the line makes with the positive direction of the x-axis, like acute angle alpha here, or obtuse angle beta there. Remember, the tan of the angle of inclination equals the gradient of the line. Therefore, the gradient of this line is positive because it is the tan of an acute angle alpha. And the gradient of this line is negative because it is the gradient 
of an obtuse angle. And now, general concepts which apply to all graphs. Axis intercepts. Because every point on the y-axis has an x-coordinate equal to 0, we substitute x equal to naught in the equation of a graph to find the y-intercept or intercepts. And similarly, because every point on the x-axis has a y-coordinate equal to 0, we substitute y equal to naught to find the x-intercepts, no matter what graph we're dealing with. The equation of a graph is true for all points on the graph. Types or shapes. Each graph has its own standard equation indicating its shape. y equals mx plus c, a straight line. x squared plus y squared equals r squared, a circle. y equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, a parabola, and so on. Then, points on graphs. If a point lies on a graph, the equation is true for its coordinates, so substitute. And conversely, i.e. the other way round, if a point satisfies the equation of a graph, then it does lie on the graph. Points of intersection. The coordinates of the points of intersection of two graphs satisfy both equations simultaneously, i.e. at the same time, and are found either algebraically by solving the two equations or graphically by reading from the graph. Straight line graphs and their equations. Standard forms. y equals mx plus c, where m is the gradient and c the y-intercept, or y minus y1 equal to m, x minus x1, where we need m and a point. In this equation, y equals mx plus c, if we substitute the gradient m equal to 0, then the equation becomes y equals c, the standard form of lines parallel to the x-axis, all horizontal lines. When the y-intercept c equals 0, the equation becomes y equals mx, the standard form of the equation of all lines through the origin. Also, the unusual equation of x equals k, a constant, is the standard form of all lines parallel to the y-axis, and so of all vertical lines. The general form of the equation of a straight line is ax plus by plus c equal to 0, for example 2x plus 3y plus 6 equal to 0. And here the dual intercept method works well. There is no need to convert this equation into standard form. Simply substitute x equal to naught to find the y-intercept and then y equal to naught to find the x-intercept. Circles with the origin as center, in which case the equation is x squared plus y squared equal to r squared, applying the theorem of Pythagoras. And all that we would need to determine this equation would be the radius. Circles with any given center, in which case the equation is x minus a all squared plus y minus b all squared equal to r squared, again applying the theorem of Pythagoras. To determine this equation, we would need the center, ab, and the radius, r. Converting the equation from the general form to the standard form by completing the squares is necessary in order to determine the center and the radius. Converting from this general form down to this standard form here enables us to write down the center of the circle as the point 3, minus 4, and the radius as being the square root of 50. A tangent to a circle. From circle geometry, we know that a tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius at the point of contact. 
To find the equation of a tangent, use the gradient and one point. In the straight line equation, y minus y1 equal to m x minus x1 or y equals mx plus c. If the gradient of the radius is 2, then the gradient of the tangent will be negative 1 over 2. Points of intersection of a line and a circle. A line and a circle either cut, and there are two points in common, or touch, and there's one point in common, and of course that line is the tangent to the circle, or don't cut or touch, and there are no points in common. Solving their equation simultaneously will yield two solutions, one solution or no solutions. Final advice, use common sense and the picture. Be sure to have this toolkit at hand as a dashboard which you can access, especially in the next exam prep video. Be inspired as you apply this toolkit and real thinking. Remember, common sense and the sketch. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.